Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with my full one month follow up review of the BlackBerry Key 2. So I've been using the BlackBerry Key 2 for the last month, actually a little bit longer than a month. I believe I got it on either August the 2nd or August the 3rd. So it's more like a five and a half week review if I've done my math in my head right, which is always dangerous. So I'm happy to say I'm still using it as my daily driver and I'm still just as happy with it as I was on day one. So the honeymoon period is not over yet and I'm still enjoying using it as my primary device. Even though I also have an LG G7 and a Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now there are places for both of those. And if I were just using one phone, I would still use the BlackBerry Key 2. The only really added benefit that I get from using the other devices are the cameras and the video, which are important because of course I use them to shoot my review video, which is one of the reasons why I carry two phones. If I didn't carry two phones, I would just have a regular camera that I would do all my video recording with. But I like the ease of use of having a second phone and it just makes life a lot easier. All I have to do is just record the video, upload it to YouTube and call the day. So I always want the best and the brightest that's available. But for a daily driver, 90% of what I do is I like to type. I send text messages, I send emails, I browse the web, I talk in Slack or BBM. There's so many different things that I use that the keyboard makes life so much easier. So before I go into this too much, uh, if anyone's new to this and isn't familiar with the specs, I'll go ahead and run this down. It's got 4G LTE, of course. It's got a 4.5 inch IPS LCD panel at 1620 by 1080, which is 1080p. The reason it's not, not 1920 by 1080 is because of the scaled down uh, screen size for the dimensions. It's got 434 pixels per inch. It's got the super awesome Snapdragon 660 octa-core processor. It's got dual 12 megapixel cameras, a telephoto and a wide lens. It has a eight megapixel front facing camera. It has 64 gigabytes of onboard storage and six gigs of RAM, which is the bee's knees. It has a 3,500 milliamp battery, which I'm here to say works all day. I know there were some people that were concerned about it with the battery size, uh, especially using the more powerful processor versus the Snapdragon 625 that was in the key one. This one still gets me through an entire day and I use it like a beast. So the battery is, is on par with, with my needs and what I think probably any heavy user uh, would want in a phone battery. It's got a uh, running Oreo on it, Android 8.1. And then, yeah, that's it for the spec sheet on the back. And the one nice thing about the software is that it's been getting regular security updates. It's getting, it's had feature updates too. So let me go down here. System, system updates. So it's running 8.1. Let me see if I can get the information here. So the current and most latest one is the ABE 181. And I can't, where's it about? There we go, August 5th, 2018. So we don't have one for uh, for September yet, but it's still early in September. But this last, pa uh, this last patch was very helpful. Now, one of the concerns that I had when I first started using the phone, if you've been using a BlackBerry phone in the past, especially at a physical keyboard, was the dreaded double typing. The Q10 was terrible with the double typing. The Classic had some problems with the double typing. So looming in the back of my mind, anytime I have a physical keyboard, now I worry about the double typing. What I mean by double typing is you hit the button and it presses two characters instead of one. I did have a little bit of a problem with that for like the first week or two. And it wasn't all the time. It was every once in a while, you'll get a stray extra character in there, but they were able to get that fixed with the last two software patches. So the software patch before this one mostly fixed it for everybody. And then this one fixed it completely for me and I haven't had any issues with it at all. So I've been very happy with that. Now, as far as my experience with the phone, I'm still using the Rinky Fusion case, which is probably the most reputable case out there you can get that I would recommend, especially for less than like, you know, 15 bucks. It's a good case. It comes in two different colors. Of course, the back is clear. You get the clear, you get the black for the smoke look around the edges, the bumpers. It works well, it keeps my phone protected. The only thing I don't like is it does tend to get a residue buildup on it. Uh, I, I'm constantly cleaning it. You can kind of see there, I just cleaned it. So that's my only hang up with it. Uh, the camera, it is what it is. Um, and I hate to say that, but I'm really not much of a photo taker. 
And on top of that, and especially on that selfie photo taker, and I will say that this takes pretty terrible selfies. If you have optimal lighting and you're outside or natural ambient lighting conditions are good, you can take a perfectly good selfie. If you try and do it in low light, uh, it's not going to feel like a $600 camera at all, a $600 phone camera. I mean, uh, as far as the primary shooter, I'll go ahead and link again my Instagram pictures that I took down there. Whenever I tested this camera out, I went out, I went to the USS Lexington in Corpus Christi, which is a retired naval aircraft carrier. And I took lots of pictures. I took my G7, I took my S9 Plus at the time, which I sold to get the Note 9, and then I had the Key 2. And I took a lot of side-by-side -side comparison photos so you can see them. It's like, okay, this is with the Note, this is with the 9 Plus, this is with the G7, this is with the Key 2. And the Key 2 kept up really well. Uh, I was very surprised because I'd heard so many terrible things about the camera. Well, if you take pictures outside after like, you know, dusk, or you take them in low light, or you take them in early morning, not going to be so great. If you have ideal lighting, it actually takes really good pictures. So I will give it that. Uh, it does have problems with focusing. Uh, it's, but many cameras have that problem. Even my G7, the G7 can take amazing pictures, especially in manual mode. But point and click shooting, sometimes it has issues with focusing properly. So you might have to take two or three. The same is true with this one. Uh, if you plan on taking a picture, try and take two or three at the same time. So that way you can make sure you get the best possible shot that you want. All right, so as far as the performance, the Snapdragon 660 has been phenomenal. I can play anything I want on here. Uh, I even played War Robots. Uh, you know, I haven't tried World of Warships. I think I'm gonna try that one out and then I'll get back. Uh, I did test it out on the Blue Vivo 11 Plus that I just did a review for, and it was able to handle it with the Helio P60 processor by MediaTek. So I'm hoping that it will work on here as well. I'll have to give it a whirl. War Robots was kind of a wash because it wanted to pretend like the physical keys were a keyboard, and I guess that would be okay if the game were played you know, vertically instead of horizontally, so it doesn't really work out, and I couldn't figure out how to get that changed. I might be able to use my Bluetooth controller with it, and I'll have to try that too. All right, so let's get back to the phone. So we've got the volume rockers here, which work fine. One thing, and it's kind of a nifty, I guess, a phone life hack, if you will. I like to take uh, screenshots of things. It's like, oh, I see that on the internet. I need to remember that for later. I take a screenshot. This is the only phone that I've used where I can take a screenshot with one finger. Of course, everything's conveniently located on the right side. All you have to do is just hit the power button and the volume down button at the same time, and you get a selfie, which, I mean, not a selfie, a screenshot, which is not going to show up because my phone screen is locked right now. You get your convenience key. The convenience key, I have that program for Slack. You can program it to anything that you want, basically. Honestly, what I really would like is I want to use it for a home button. I wish I could press that and make it go back to the home screen. But unfortunately, they don't have that option. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll send them an email. That would be nice. I wish it had a physical home button or a physical back button. I'm so used to using Blackberries with keyboards and they would have a back button or you just do the simple swipe gesture. Here it's like, okay, swipe up get the little capacitive button and hit that and then you can go home. But I really wish I could program some key on here to take me home. That would be really nice. All right, so one of the added bells and whistles that we have here, and of course your fingerprint sensor on the keyboard, on the space bar doubles, you know, it's your fingerprint sensor, unlock the phone. This cool capacitive keyboard is one of the features that really draws people in. So you can swipe left and right, you can use this on the home screen. Uh, I can go into Crackberry. You can use it with pretty much anything. You can scroll up and down using this, just touching and sliding your finger across the keyboard as if it were a screen. So that works well. Now I'll show you the shortcut keys that you have built in the keyboard. So uh, G, short press, I have it to go to Google. Um, uh, B, I have for Boom Beach. So it'll fire Boom Beach right up. My long press will take me to, it'll take me back to Google. It go, goes to Google Chrome for browser. <clears throat> C, I have set up for calculator. Long C, I have set up for compose. So you get the short press and the long press. And then, of course, the, the speed key. The way that works is, okay, if you're inside of, like, let's say, an app and you want to press one of your short presses, it doesn't work. <coughs> you have to use the speed key. The speed key gets around having to go back to the home screen so you can use your shortcut keys. So I'll set it up, you can set up the speed key. So hit the speed key button, hit G, takes me straight to Google. So it works really well. It's very fast, works well, multitasking uh, is great. 
Now, other things that I can hint on, um, one thing I really like is every time you turn the screen on, the way it's set by default, it gives you, I need to get this thing to go away. All right, there we go. Every time you turn the screen on and off, you get a different wallpaper. And some of the wallpaper is really cool. I like, I like it a lot. It's really neat. So we'll go ahead and do this. Now, I think I would be, you know, not doing justice to the, to the review if I didn't talk about the DTech security software suite. It does work well. I actually factory reset my phone yesterday uh, because whenever it did the scan, right now it says excellent, but whenever it popped up, it said poor and it said there was something wrong with the, the device. Somehow the software was compromised. I think it was a third party app that I downloaded because I was trying to get my phone to work with screencast uh, with my smart display that I was reviewing. And I think it corrupted something in the operating system. So even though I couldn't tell there was anything going on, uh, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, it didn't seem like there was anything different at all. Um, it said that it was corrupt and the only way to fix it was to do a factory reset. So I did, and I haven't had any problems since then. I, I didn't have any problems really then, but other than, it, it keeps your phone safe. It monitors third-party apps, it monitors permissions, all that good stuff, and it tells you um, how secure your phone is. So I, I like that. It gives me a certain uh, peace of mind whenever I'm using my phone. Uh, a cool feature with the camera, you've got the uh, secure locker, which you can save files, videos, and pictures in. So if you want to take a picture of something, if you press the regular shutter button, it's going to go to your camera, it's going to go to your pictures. But if you hold your finger on the fingerprint sensor, just like that, it'll take the pictures and they will go to your secure locker. <coughs> so in the secure locker, which is a really nice thing to have. You go into the locker, you can set it up with a pen, or you can use your fingerprint, go into here, go into the private gallery, bam, they went straight there. So that's cool, it's a nifty little feature as well. Uh, the display, I wish it were brighter. Um, I do like the standard background in here that's been here since the BlackBerry Priv. If you use one of those, then this will look very familiar to you. But overall, uh, I've been super impressed with the, with the phone. And mainly, like I said, it's because of the keyboard. Now, as far as the specs and the performance, sure. If you wanted to go spend you know, 400 bucks right now, I mean, you can get a Razer phone, the first generation Razer phone, Snapdragon 835, eight gigs of RAM. Um, it's 120 Hertz refresh rate on the screen. It's a, it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal phone, but it doesn't have a keyboard built into it. So there are other phones that you can get that would be worthwhile purchases. But like I said, they don't come with a keyboard. So if you want a keyboard, this is pretty much your best option. Now they have the Key2 Lite coming out, the Lite Edition LE, which is gonna be a step up from the uh, original Key1, which has a 626 in it. It's gonna have the four gigs of RAM. A lot of things uh, are the same other than it doesn't have the capacitive keyboard. So if you wanna hold out for that, I would say go ahead and do that versus buying the key one because I think it is going to be a little bit better <clears throat> unless you just have to have the capacitive touch screen, uh, the touch keyboard. I, I don't really use the capacitive touch keyboard all that much, so I'm not a huge advocate. So if they could shave off 100 bucks off this phone and get rid of the capacitive keyboard, I'd be perfectly happy and all right with that. But as things are, it's here uh, to stay at least for the foreseeable future. So <clears throat> this phone... I think is well worth the money if you want a keyboard. If you don't want a keyboard, absolutely do not buy this phone. I recommend to zero people, 0% zero that you buy this phone if you don't want the keyboard because the keyboard is what makes this phone amazing. The way it's tied in, uh, the shortcuts, uh, even if you like it, the capacitive capabilities of the keyboard, the I like having the fingerprint sensor built into the space bar, the keyboard, the keys are 25% larger than the key one, uh, the multitasking capabilities, everything. This is built from the ground up for productivity, which is what I need a phone for. I do everything from here. Uh, all, all of my core features that I do on my phone, I do from here. My secondary phone is only for media consumption and video games and also uh, so I can record videos and upload all that stuff because the video camera on this is really not all that great either. But it's not designed for that. It has it because it needs to to exist in the smartphone world, but it's by no means is that a selling quality or feature that you want in your BlackBerry. If, if they wanted to include that stuff, you'd be paying seven, seven fifty, eight hundred dollars for a BlackBerry and then like, nobody would be buying a BlackBerry. Of course, I'd still buy one because I love them. But the normal population, anyone that might be interested in it would shy away at those prices. And I think that this one's even priced a little bit too high. 
I think at 549 it's a great value. So if you can get one on sale, if they drop the price on it, then I think at 549 that's really kind of the sweet spot. And typically BlackBerry overprices their phones and BlackBerry Mobile seems to do the same thing. So when they come out, it's like they know that like a certain group of people are going to buy it on day one, regardless if it's 800 bucks or 400 bucks. And then, you know, they tend to drop the price a little bit later. So if you wait, if you're interested in this, but you don't want to spend the full price, I'm sure around Black Friday, Friday you can probably get it for $549, if not around Christmas time, <clears throat> maybe a little bit cheaper. But at $649, if you want it, I can say that it's worth it and that you'll be happy. But anyway, that's about all I have for my impressions for the BlackBerry Key 2. I love it. I'm super happy with it. It beats out any other phone that I'm interested in for my daily driver just because, to me, it's the perfect phone. Well, that's the perfect phone that's available anyway. I mean, I could certainly make it better. <clears throat> but as far as what's out there and what's available, I love it. And I love it because of the physical keyboard. <clears throat> so anyway, that's all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to ask questions. Uh, hit the subscribe button and share. And let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll get back with you. I'll see you all next time.